I have a confession to make. I hate writing automation tests. It isn't because I don't want to test. It's because I love Visual Studio. I feel like Selenium and Playwright tooling is just lacking. I miss that ease of code and building, debugging, without fumbling back and forth between command lines. I miss that IDE feeling. But what if Playwright could change that? Let's look at the Playwright Visual Studio extension and see what it does. Let's start by opening Visual Studio code up in a folder. To install the extension, we're gonna click over here on extensions, type in the word Playwright, and then click install on the Microsoft one. Just that fast, it should be installed, and then we'll just close out this tab. We'll hit Control shift p and then I have the command here, test install Playwright. You can also search Playwright and see that same command. And it's gonna ask us which browser we want to install. For now, we're just gonna click all of them and click okay. We'll see down here in the command prompt, it's gonna run the NPM commands for us, installing Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. There's no reason to install all three of them, but you can if you want. It didn't take that long for me to download it. I have already downloaded those browsers before. It'll take a little bit longer for you the first time you download those browsers just to cache those. So now we can see it generated this config file and these tests. And so we have some sample tests here, which is cool. So we can see the first integration now is running tests here from just clicking a button. So we have a blue, let me click on that again. So now I clicked on this one, I clicked on the run here, and you can see that these little gray numbers are coming up saying how long each step took. So this line took 31 milliseconds, this line took 49 milliseconds, we took almost three seconds here. So it's a cool integration. We can see how long every test took, and then we can see um, how long each test is taking. It looks like mine got hung up here. So let's just try hitting this again and seeing if we'll start this. And as they're running, you can see which line it's on by the blue highlights that keep popping up on the screen. And it looks like there's some bug here, but we'll just ignore that for now. So we're able to run the test really easy. We're off to a great start with this plugin. You know, usually we have a problem when we want to create tests. And here we have a record button up in this top left corner. So this went to recording and now it popped up a box for me so I can go to any website. And after I'm done clicking, I'm just going to close this window. And we have a test right here. I am going to change this test just a little bit. So now that I changed that test, it generated a test here where it goes to Stack Overflow, it checks the URL, it goes to Products, it navigates around, clicks around, uh, checks them for some active elements, and then finally it ends up on a page. So if we want to prove that works, we can just hit that green button here. You can see as it runs through the test, it's running headlessly by default. So that's cool, but what if we want to run it headed and see it actually run through? There's another one here that's um, an icon that looks like a debug test. And when you run that, it runs the test in the headed mode for you. And right here, it's telling it it's going to run in uh, Chromium. We can see that test ran in 6.2 seconds. We can see the first part took 2.4 milliseconds. And then from there on, the actions happened really quickly. Uh, but sometimes you want to debug the test. You don't just want to generate a test. You want to actually see what's going on. So let's put a breakpoint in here and then let's go back and debug again. So after just putting in a breakpoint, we can see that we can debug. There's multiple places you can put breakpoints in here. And as you click on locators, you can see that the page is selecting those items. What's really cool here is you can actually edit these on the fly. So if I step into this next step, we can see that it's going to do something here with that button. But if I want to change this text to got a conflict, you can see that the only item with that is selected right there. If I change and choose something like enable, it finds that one line. And if I go back and only use un, you can see it's selecting the 22 places on the screen that it would select for you. So it's really cool that you can modify your test while you're debugging to kind of move by step by step. So here, if we step to the next step now, it can still find, it can still find this text here. So we'll just go ahead and step over it. And the test still continues. So you can build your test out about one step ahead and just keep on moving through your test. If we rerun the test one more time here, 
when we debug this test while we're debugging, we can actually access anything that's on the page here in our console. So we can see that we have the page. We can see that a page locator. We can actually see what gets returned back from our locators. So it really gives you a lot of power when you're debugging to see what's going to happen with Playwright in Visual Studio Code without going anywhere else. It really gives you that IDE feel back again. We can see that there's the page variable up there as well. So you have all these local variables that you can keep track of and you can dig kind of in there as well. You can also add watches. I have no idea what's actually available right now. If we add to our watch, we can see that we can have access to about anything we want in here to keep track of during our tests. It really is a lot more like Visual Studio when you're using this extension. If this has got you interested in Playwright, check out my Playwright Masterclass. It goes a lot deeper into all the things Playwright.